In astrodynamics and aerospace, a delta V budget is an estimate of the total change in velocity delta v required for a space mission. It is calculated as the sum of the delta Vs required to perform each propulsive maneuver needed during the mission. As input to the Tsiolkovsky rocket equation, it determines how much propellant is required for a vehicle of given mass and propulsion system. Delta V is a scalar quantity dependent only on the desired trajectory and not on the mass of the space vehicle. For example, although more fuel is needed to transfer a heavier communication satellite from low Earth orbit to geosynchronous orbit than for a lighter one, the delta V required is the same. Also delta V is additive, as contrasted to rocket burn time, the latter having greater effect later in the mission when more fuel has been used up. Tables of the delta V required to move between different space venues are useful in the conceptual planning of space missions. In the absence of an atmosphere, the delta V is typically the same for changes in orbit in either direction, in particular, gaining and losing speed cost an equal effort. An atmosphere can be used to slow a spacecraft by aerobraking. A typical delta V budget might enumerate various classes of maneuvers, delta V per maneuver, and number of each maneuver required over the life of the mission, and simply sum the total delta V, much like a typical financial budget. Because the delta V needed to achieve the mission usually varies with the relative position of the gravitating bodies, launch windows are often calculated from porkchop plots that show delta V plotted against the launch time. Topic. General principles The Tsiolkovsky rocket equation shows that the delta V of a rocket stage is proportional to the logarithm of the fuel-to-empty mass ratio of the vehicle, and to the specific impulse of the rocket engine. A key goal in designing space mission trajectories is to minimize the required delta V to reduce the size and expense of the rocket that would be needed to successfully deliver any particular payload to its destination. The simplest delta V budget can be calculated with Hohmann transfer, which moves from one circular orbit to another coplanar circular orbit via an elliptical transfer orbit. In some cases, a bi elliptic transfer can give a lower delta V. A more complex transfer occurs when the orbits are not coplanar. In that case there is an additional delta V necessary to change the plane of the orbit. The velocity of the vehicle needs substantial burns at the intersection of the two orbital planes and the delta V is usually extremely high. However, these plane changes can be almost free in some cases if the gravity and mass of a planetary body is used to perform the deflection. In other cases, boosting up to a relatively high altitude apopsis gives low speed before performing the plane change and this can give lower total delta V. The slingshot effect can be used to give a boost of speed, energy. If a vehicle goes past a planetary or lunar body, it is possible to pick up or lose some of that body's orbital speed relative to the Sun or another planet. Another effect is the Oberth effect. This can be used to greatly decrease the delta V needed, because using propellant at low potential energy, high speed multiplies the effect of a burn. Thus for example the delta V for a Hohmann transfer from Earth's orbital radius to Mars's orbital radius to overcome the Sun's gravity is many kilometers per second, but the incremental burn from low Earth orbit Leo over and above the burn to overcome Earth's gravity is far less if the burn is done close to Earth than if the burn to reach a Mars transfer orbit is performed at Earth's orbit, but far away from Earth. A less used effect is low energy transfers. These are highly nonlinear effects that work by orbital resonances and by choosing trajectories close to Lagrange points. They can be very slow, but use very little delta V. Because delta V depends on the position and motion of celestial bodies, particularly when using the slingshot effect and Oberth effect, the delta V budget changes with launch time. These can be plotted on a porkchop plot. Course corrections usually also require some propellant budget. 
Propulsion systems never provide precisely the right propulsion in precisely the right direction at all times and navigation also introduces some uncertainty. Some propellant needs to be reserved to correct variations from the optimum trajectory. Topic. Budget Topic. Launch, landing The delta V requirements for sub-orbital spaceflight are much lower than for orbital spaceflight. For the Ansari X Prize altitude of 100 km, Spaceship 1 required a delta V of roughly 1.4 km per second. To reach the initial low Earth orbit of the International Space Station of 300 km, now 400 km the delta V is over six times higher, about 9.4 km per second. Because of the exponential nature of the rocket equation the orbital rocket needs to be considerably bigger. Launch to LEO. This not only requires an increase of velocity from 0 to 7.8 km per second, but also typically 1.5 to 2 km per second for atmospheric drag and gravity drag. Re-entry from LEO. The delta V required is the orbital maneuvering burn to lower perigee into the atmosphere. Atmospheric drag takes care of the rest. Topic: Station keeping. Topic: Earth Moon space. High thrust. Delta V needed to move inside the Earth-Moon system speeds lower than escape velocity are given in kilometer per second. This table assumes that the Oberth effect is being used. This is possible with high thrust chemical propulsion but not with current as of 2018 electrical propulsion. The return to LEO figures assume that a heat shield and aerobraking, aerocapture is used to reduce the speed by up to 3.2 km per second. The heat shield increases the mass, possibly by 15%. Where a heat shield is not used the higher, from LEO, delta V figure applies. The extra propellant needed to replace the aerobraking is likely to be heavier than a heat shield. LEO Ken refers to a low Earth orbit with an inclination to the equator of 28 degrees, corresponding to a launch from Kennedy Space Center. LEO EQ is an equatorial orbit. The reference for most of the data no longer works, and some things are not clear, such as why there is such a big difference between going from EML2 to LEO versus going from EML1 to LEO. The figure for LEO to EML2 comes from a paper by Robert W. Farquhar. One could probably use a similar tactic to get to EML1 for about the same delta V. Note that getting to one of the Lagrange points means not just getting to the right place but also adjusting the final velocity in order to stay there. Another source gives values from LEO to GEO, EML1, and lunar surface. Topic: Earth Moon space. Low thrust. Current electric ion thrusters produce a very low thrust millinewtons, yielding a small fraction of Ag, so the Oberth effect cannot normally be used. This results in the journey requiring a higher delta V and frequently a large increase in time compared to a high thrust chemical rocket. Nonetheless, the high specific impulse of electrical thrusters may significantly reduce the cost of the flight. For missions in the Earth-Moon system, an increase in journey time from days to months could be unacceptable for human space flight, but differences in flight time for interplanetary flights are less significant and could be favorable. The table below presents delta Vs in kilometer per second, normally accurate to two significant figures and will be the same in both directions, unless aerobraking is used as described in the high thrust section above. Topic. Interplanetary 
The spacecraft is assumed to be using chemical propulsion and the Oberth effect. According to Marsden and Ross, the energy levels of the Sun-Earth L1 and L2 points differ from those of the Earth-Moon system by only 50 m per second as measured by maneuver velocity. We may apply the formula Delta V equals mu R 1 2 R 2 R 1 plus r 2 minus 1 display style delta v equals sqrt frac mu r underscore 1 left sqrt frac 2 r underscore 2 r underscore 1 plus r underscore 2 minus 1 right where mu equals gm is the standard gravitational parameter of the Sun, see Hohmann transfer orbit, to calculate the delta v in kilometer per second needed to arrive at various destinations from Earth, assuming circular orbits for the planets, and using perihelion distance for Pluto. In this table, the column labeled delta v to enter Hohmann orbit from Earth's orbit gives the change from Earth's velocity to the velocity needed to get on a Hohmann ellipse whose other end will be at the desired distance from the Sun. The column labeled V exiting Leo gives the velocity needed in a non-rotating frame of reference centered on Earth when 300 km above Earth's surface. This is obtained by adding to the specific kinetic energy the square of the speed 7.73 km per second of this low Earth orbit, that is, the depth of Earth's gravity well at this LEO. The column, delta V from LEO, is simply the previous speed minus 7.73 km per second. Note that the values in the table only give the delta V needed to get to the orbital distance of the planet. The speed relative to the planet will still be considerable, and in order to go into orbit around the planet either aerocapture is needed using the planet's atmosphere, or more delta V is needed. The New Horizons space probe to Pluto achieved a near-Earth speed of over 16 km per second which was enough to escape from the Sun. It also got a boost from a flyby of Jupiter. To get to the Sun, it is actually not necessary to use a delta V of 24 km per second. One can use 8.8 .8 km per second to go very far away from the Sun, then use a negligible delta V to bring the angular momentum to zero, and then fall into the Sun. This can be considered a sequence of two Hohmann transfers, one up and one down. Also, the table does not give the values that would apply when using the Moon for a gravity assist. There are also possibilities of using one planet, like Venus which is the easiest to get to, to assist getting to other planets or the Sun. The Galileo spacecraft used Venus once and Earth twice in order to reach Jupiter. The Ulysses solar probe used Jupiter to attain polar orbit around the Sun. Topic. Delta versus between Earth, Moon and Mars Delta V needed for various orbital maneuvers using conventional rockets. Abbreviations key Escape orbits with low paracenter, C3 equals 0 Geostationary orbit, GEO Geostationary transfer orbit, GTO Earth Moon L5 Lagrangian point, L5 Low Earth orbit, LEO Lunar orbit means low lunar orbit Red arrows show where optional aerobraking, aerocapture can be performed in that particular direction, black numbers give delta V in kilometer per second that apply in either direction. Lower delta V transfers than shown can often be achieved, but involve rare transfer windows or take significantly longer, c, fuzzy orbital transfers. Electric propulsion vehicles going from Mars C3 Topic. Zero to Earth C3 
Zero without using the Oberth effect need a larger delta V of between 2.6 km per second and 3.15 km per second. Not all possible links are shown. The delta V for C3 equals zero to Mars transfer must be applied at paracenter, i.e. immediately after accelerating to the escape trajectory, and do not agree with the formula above which gives 0.4 from Earth escape and 0.65 from Mars escape. The figures for LEO to GTO, GTO to GEO, and LEO to GEO are inconsistent. The figure of 30 for LEO to the Sun is also too high. Topic. Near Earth objects Near Earth objects are asteroids whose orbits can bring them within about 0.3 astronomical units of the Earth. There are thousands of such objects that are easier to reach than the Moon or Mars. Their one way delta V budgets from LEO range upwards from 3.8 km per second, 12,000 feet per second, which is less than two thirds of the delta V needed to reach the Moon's surface. But NEOs with low delta V budgets have long synodic periods, and the intervals between times of closest approach to the Earth and thus most efficient missions can be decades long. The delta V required to return from near Earth objects is usually quite small, sometimes as low as 60 meters per second, 200 feet per second, with aero capture using Earth's atmosphere. However, heat shields are required for this, which add mass and constrain spacecraft geometry. The orbital phasing can be problematic. Once rendezvous has been achieved, low delta V return windows can be fairly far apart, more than a year, often many years, depending on the body. In general, bodies that are much further away or closer to the sun than Earth have more frequent windows for travel, but usually require larger delta versus Topic. See also Bi-elliptic transfer Gravity assist Hohmann transfer Oberth effect Orbital speed Tsiolkovsky rocket equation Pork chop plot Synodic period Notes <laughs>